Guys, I'm Sanify and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how you can make your own AI chatbot something very similar to ChatGPT. So before starting the video, let me just show you how your chatbot would look like in the end. So this is how your chatbot will look like and you can just click on start chatting to start the chatbot and now you can just type anything and it will reply to you just like any typical chatbot. So you can also ask it to write a code, for example, and it will give you the code just like how you would expect from any other chatbot. So now, before starting with the video, let me just tell you what I would not be teaching you in this video. So first of all, I won't be telling you how you can set up VS Code on your computer and how you can set up Python inside of the VS Code. So the reason I'm not teaching it here is because a lot of people have already made a lot of videos on that. So I will be leaving a link to one of those videos in the description and you can go and check it out if you have not set it up already. So once you guys have your VS Code and Python set up, all you have to do is just create a new folder. I'm just going to call it Gen AI Tutorial. And just drag and drop it inside your VS Code. And now just to make sure that your Python is set up properly, just make a main.py file. And just write print hello world and just try to run it so if you get an output just like this that means that your python and vs code is set up and you can move ahead with the video you are good to go so once you guys have this set up all you have to do is just go on to the very first link in the description which would take you on to this page right over here and this is the page where we're going to be doing all our model training so this is called google's ai studio and this is the place where you can do all of the training for your ai model so just click on I consent and continue. And now you will see something just like this. So you'll need to give drive access for this to work. So just sign in with your Google account. Now you just have to click on new tuned model. And now you can just name your new tuned model. I'm just calling it Gen AI tutorial. And then just click on create a structured prompt. So this is the dashboard that you're going to be able to see once you've completed all the steps I mentioned in the video till now. And this means that you are good to go. So now this is the place where we are going to be custom training our own AI model. So the way that it works is that there are actually two parts to this page. One is the part where you actually train your model, which is this part. And the other part is the part where you test your model, which is this part. So it might seem overwhelming at first, but trust me guys, it's actually pretty straightforward and you'll agree with me in just a couple of minutes. So this is a place where you can actually train your model, as I said, and there are actually two ways that Google provides for you to train your model. So you can use either one of those two ways or you can use both of them together. The best way to do it is to use both of them together. So the one way is that you can just simply type whatever you want the model to know beforehand over here. So for example, if you want to make a healthcare bot, you can just write you are a healthcare chatbot. So reply accordingly. So as simple as that, we can just write it. And now the model is going to know that, okay, I am a healthcare chatbot. So now when we go on to the test part of it and we ask it, who are you? Now our model is going to know that it's actually a healthcare chatbot. Don't forget to save it by the way. And once you've saved it, when you run it, it's going to reply as if you're going to reply as if it was a healthcare chatbot and not Gemini because in reality this is actually Gemini that's working like if I remove this right over here it's actually going to reply as Gemini but because we have put this here then it knows that it's actually a healthcare chatbot so it has to reply according to that so this was one way of training a model the other way of training a model is by providing Gemini with sample inputs and outputs so for example, it's basically that you tell it that if somebody asks you something like, who are you, then you have to reply like, I am a health care chatbot. Or you can write more. For example, if somebody asks, what all can you do? And we can remove this now and save it. And now when we run the same who are you command, it's going to know that it's again a healthcare chatbot and it's going to reply according to that. 
So as you can see, it said I am a healthcare chatbot designed to provide information and support. So this is how the basic AI chatbot training works and we'll get into more complex stuff later. So now let's talk about more features that Google's AI Studio provides. So on the right side on the top, you can see, first of all, we get the option to choose our model. So we can choose among the many models that Google provides us. So we're going with Gemini 1.5 flash over here. And the next thing that we have here is the token count, which means the amount of tokens that you can pass in a single prompt. So the limit that we have over here for the free plan of Gemini is 1 million tokens. So we can pass 1 million tokens inside our prompt window at a single time. And temperature over here determines that how random your response of your models would be. So if your temperature is low, then your model would reply very to the point according to how you have trained it. And if your temperature is high, the more unpredictable the responses would be and they would be completely random. Sometimes the chatbot can just generate something that is not at all related to what you provided in your example prompts. So sometimes it's better to keep temperature as low as possible, but it completely depends upon your particular use case. Here, I'm just keeping it to one, which is a middle value. So next up we have JSON mode, code execution, function calling, grounding, etc., which we are going to be learning about later. And JSON mode is actually something extremely important, but uh, it's not something for now. We're going to be learning it later in the later videos. As of now, let's test this code inside of our Python terminal. So to make it run in the Python terminal, all you have to do is that you have to click on the get code button on the top, right? And now you have to click on copy. And once you've clicked on copy, you can just directly paste it into your main.py file that you just created. And that's it. So once you guys have pasted the boilerplate code into the main.py file, then you guys have to make some changes over here before your code can actually work. So firstly, as you can clearly see that this is the part where we have our example prompts. So here we have to wrap this around a function. So here, let's just make a function called generate response. And we're going to actually pass a variable inside it. So let's just call it input text. And now we just have to wrap this inside this function. And we'll actually, instead of printing response.txt, we'll have to return response.txt. So now we have passed the input underscore text variable inside this function as a parameter. So we'll have to use it somewhere inside it. So we're going to be using it in, at this place. So this is the place we're going to be putting the input that the user is sending. So we'll put it by, first of all, we'll put curly braces. And inside that, we'll write input underscore text, which is our variable. And of course, because we're trying to use a variable inside a string, we'll have to make it an F string. So we'll just write an F over here. And now it's going to work as expected. So just save the file. So now our function is ready and now we just have to call it. So to call it, first of all, we'll need the input text, which would be input from the user. So we'll just input a string. So let's just call it a string. And now we can just print generate response string. This way we can just print our response but this way it's only going to be running once and we don't want that we want our model to run multiple times so we'll just wrap this around an infinite while loop so that it runs indefinitely and now our code for our basic chatbot is ready so now all we have to do is run it actually no if we run it right now it's not going to work why because we still did not do the most important thing which is getting our api key so the API key is actually the application programming interface key, which will allow us to use Gemini inside of our own project. So to get the API key, head back to the Google AI studio. And now you have to head over to the get API key. And then we have to click on create API key. Once you click on that, just click on got it. And now click on create API key in a new project. So once you've done that, you will be having your own API key. So just copy that from here. And now just paste it at the place of Gemini API key, just like that. Also, we're not extracting our API key from any environment variables. So we have to remove this os.envin and then we will be good to go. I'm also going to be teaching you that how you can hide this API key into a .env file because right now it is exposed. So if somebody sees your API key, then that could be a problem because you do not want to share your API key with anyone. So that's why there's a way to hide this API key into a .env file and which we're going to be learning later on. 
so as of now you can just uh, just put it publicly right now and by the way guys uh, don't try to steal my api key from over here because by the time you are watching this video i have already disabled this api key so that's not going to work and as you can see the code is now working so we can just write anything like who are you as we were writing and it should probably reply that i am a healthcare chatbot so as you can see it replied i am a healthcare chatbot so that is how our code actually works and you can also make it look a little bit better by adding bot over here as a string before you call the function because now when you run it and now when you say who are you it's going to be like bot with a colon and then it's going to reply so this will make it look a bit more clear so guys this brings us to the end of this video and the part one of this tutorial in the next part we'll be learning about structured prompts and about creating the front end for our chatbot application so thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one